Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us at the 2019 Foster School of Business graduation celebration. To begin, please take a moment to silence all electronic devices. We would also like to acknowledge the land that we are currently on. The University of Washington and Foster School acknowledge the Coast Salish peoples of this land, the land which touches the shared waters of all tribes and bands within the Suquamish, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. And now, please rise to recognize the Foster School of Business faculty and the graduating class of 2019.
Wow. Wow. So that's what the next generation of business leaders looks like. Graduates, parents, family and friends, fellow faculty and staff colleagues, Mr. Dan Beatty, Dean Jim Balvo, good afternoon and welcome. Please be seated. <laughs> I am Steve Sefcik, Professor of Accounting and Associate Dean for Undergraduate Programs at the Foster School of Business. And it's my genuine pleasure to be here with all of you this afternoon at this special gathering. Thank you for coming to this great event. I know all of you in attendance today are extremely proud of the graduate that you are here to support. Please share your photos, thoughts, and shout outs on social media sites and include hashtag FosterGrad2019. Again, that's hashtag <laughs> FosterGrad2019. As I look out across this impressive group, I think about the investment that we have made in you. The investment has many stakeholders, your family and your friends, your mentors, your advisors, your classmates and colleagues, your professors, and perhaps most importantly, you. Yes, you. You have invested in your education. You have spent countless hours going to class, studying in the library, working on group projects, taking tests, writing term papers. You've participated in case competitions. In fact, some of you uh, just last week in Management 430. You have attended numerous foster events. You have worked on student consulting teams and you've participated in career services activities. You have helped build and served as leaders in foster clubs and organizations. You've studied abroad, yes, you have made a substantive investment in you. You have made a significant and long-term investment in your education and your future career. And like all investments, it's time for us to think about returns. Um, after all, this is a business school. <laughs> what, what sort of ROI will you earn? What sort of return on investment will you generate? What sort of dividends can we expect? Wait a sec. This is not about debt service. This is not about payback. That's the wrong direction. Actually, what this is about is pay it forward. Yes, forward. Forgive the mixed metaphors, but I'm not talking about writing a check. I'm talking about building our brand. I'm talking about helping us make Foster the best public business school in the United States. I'm, yeah. I'm talking about finding a way to help students who come after you. So how then? Come back to share your experiences with a class. Serve as a mentor for one of our clubs or organizations. Judge a case competition. We'd love to have you do that. Help us place a student in an internship at your firm. Serve as, as a business expert in a social cause or a charitable organization that you believe in. The point is share your expertise. These are the type of activities that compound your investment. These are the returns we expect, and this is how you pay it forward. So what are your future goals? What can we expect from you? The Foster School of Business creates futures and transforms lives. We are committed to educating and guiding talented minds towards successful outcomes. Success is evidenced by our employment statistics, by our long-standing partnerships with iconic Northwest companies, and by our advancement of business as a force for good, the, 
yes, the so-called nobility of business. But again, I ask you, what are your goals? Where will you take this incredible education you have received? How will each of you pay it forward? This then is your real challenge. Will you accept it? Yes, I believe so. I sincerely believe that each of the 757 undergraduates that make up the class of 2019 will be up for that challenge. These graduates, yeah, these graduates, yes, these graduates are, I'm not the only one proud of you, can you tell? These graduates are strategic thinkers who know how to roll up their sleeves and take on real world business challenges. These graduates are passionate about making a difference. Yes, I am absolutely certain that they will leverage their phenomenal college experience to ensure extraordinary future success and impact. Yes, I am confident that each of these undergraduates here today has the dedication and the skills, the commitment, and importantly, the honor to pay it forward. And with that, it's time to move on with our program. It is now my great pleasure to welcome a friend, a colleague, a fellow accountant to the podium, the outgoing dean of the Michael G. Foster School of Business, Jim Giambalvo. After 14 years of leadership, Jim bestows on us a legacy of noteworthy rankings, state-of-the-art build buildings, and compelling programs. He has been an epic leader. Please join me in a warm welcome for Dean Jim Giambaldo. Well, good afternoon. On behalf of the faculty and staff of the Foster School of Business, it's my pleasure to welcome the family and friends of the class of 2019. And congratulations, graduates, on completing a rigorous program of study, one that will prepare you for the challenges of today and form a solid foundation for the lifelong learning necessary to sustain your careers in our ever-changing business environment. The Foster School was founded in 1917 and has a long tradition of excellence and a wide geographical influence of which to be very proud. It's a distinct pleasure to welcome the class of 2019 to the ranks of Foster alumni, and I hope and expect that the world of business and society will be better for your efforts to create economic opportunities for yourselves and others. Members of the class of 2019, please know you have my admiration for the hard work that led to a Foster degree, and you have my very best wishes for future success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jim. It is now my pleasure to introduce our student speaker for today's ceremony. <laughs> it doesn't sound like he needs any introduction, but please, Sassinos, please stand. Sassinos Zerbabiel. Sassinos is majoring in marketing with a minor in informatics. He was a YEOC student, a member of Delta Sigma Pi Business Fraternity, <laughs> the Montlake Consulting Group, and GC3, the Global Business Case Competition Club. He studied abroad in Paris and recently returned from competing in a case competition in Thailand. <laughs> I want to take a moment to share how Cicino's student and staff colleagues describe him. Cicino's is an individual who embodies a level of selflessness and positive attitude that inspires anyone who comes into contact with him. He is a role model in every aspect of the word. Sosinos has this superpower in being able to bring people together, whether it be a group project, the club commitments, or his relationships with his friends. He carries a warm and inviting spirit wherever he goes, and he leaves an indelible impression of his friendliness that makes you feel not just welcomed, but accepted. Sosinos is a community leader who takes ownership in making those around him better. His determination 
regardless of what barrier or obstacle you put in his way, is unstoppable. He is thoughtful, caring, and most importantly, humble in everything he does. Upon graduation, Sosinos will be heading to New York City to join Ernst & Young as a management consultant in their digital practice. How about that? Please join me in a warm welcome for Foster's 2019 graduating class student speaker, Sosinos Zerbabia. I promised myself I wouldn't be too emotional, so <laughs> don't mind me. Um, wow. Thank you, Dean Sabchuk, for that, uh, for that introduction. Uh, to start off in my native language, Tigrinya, Zakhabar Kumin, Zakhabar Kinin. Kabrahuk and Karaban, and Kwa Badahan Matahum. And Kwa Nabzikha Abkaanna. And now back to English. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, those from far and near, families, students, faculty, and the illustrious class of 2019. It is a great privilege and honor to, to be speaking before you today. Now, before I get started, I would like to take a moment to honor the Coast Salish people, the indigenous people to the land we're currently standing on. My name is Sasino Zarabiel. I am a proud first-generation Eritrean American and the first in my family to be obtaining a bachelor's degree. <laughs> my story begins in Eritrea, a small country located in the Horn of Africa, a country where under Italian colonial, colonial rule, my grandparents were only allowed to be schooled until the fourth grade. Colonization led to Ethiopian annexation, and my parents fled Eritrea in the late 80s, escaping war, genocide, and instability. It was fear that pushed my mother, Tsagerara Mungustu, and my father, Zarbabi al balai out of their homes and into the unknown. They found refuge in Sudan and eventually the United States. Eritrea eventually became independent, but has since become one of the world's worst human rights abusers. With their fear, fear has been instilled to silence, suppress, and has pushed out thousands of Eritreans who just want the opportunity to work toward bettering their lives. The only thing my family and many others knew was that they needed to leave but had no anticipation of where they would end up. You see, anything was better than the status quo. The only thing stronger than fear was hope. I can't help but think how privileged we are not only to receive an education, but the ability to, use it, the ability to use it to propel us into opportunities that will better our lives. But most importantly, it's our ability to dream, our ability to accomplish anything we put our minds to, something my people haven't been able to do for generations. Like many immigrants, my parents came from very little, but they have sacrificed everything to create a foundation for my siblings and I. Whether it was my mother waking up at 2 a.m. every morning only to come home after work and take us to soccer and swimming practices, never complaining about anything, unlimited to no sleep. My father only getting to see us on mornings before school and weekends as they planned their work schedule so that there was always one parent at home. They gave us everything they never had and everything I could have ever asked for, and for that, I'm forever grateful. Through their sweat and tears, they fostered and instilled the values of hard work, responsibility, resilience, humility, patience, community, culture, and giving back. I always knew I had to do my part, as my family and community have done for me, that I have a responsibility to uplift others as I climb the ladder many of us call the American dream. Throughout the remainder of my speech, I want you to think about where you're from, where you are, and where you're going. For my parents, fear for their lives pushed them away from their homes into the unknown. They had to stay hopeful for a better future. I want you all to think about some of your fears or roadblocks that you feel are preventing you from getting to where you need to be. And allow me to tell you a story about a time I had to overcome one of my fears. Now think back to senior year of high school. 
We're wrapping up an important milestone in our lives, just as we are today. We're excited about being adults, getting into our dream schools, as UW was for me. Through my involvement with UW's amazing high school programs, such as Young, executive, young Executives of Color, and being a Seattle native, I romanticized being here like it was going to be my gateway for better opportunities. I felt that my success depended on me being here. But spring came around, and I faced one of my worst fears, a rejection from UW. Now this fear was different than that of my parents and my grandparents. It wasn't fear for life. It was a fear of thinking I wasn't worthy enough. I was the first after generations to have started schooling where there weren't these harsh realities deviating me from success. I was heartbroken. You see, the rejection wasn't just about me. Being a first-generation college student is also about fighting the injustices and inequalities that the world has created for so many groups of people, and especially for those that came before me while also paving the way for those that come after me. The feeling of betrayal and rejection haunted me. Not only did I feel like I failed myself, but even worse, I felt like I failed my family, my friends, and my community. Fear can oftentimes consume our thoughts. And it can be one of the hardest things we have to deal with or overcome. This moment was one of my biggest tests. I knew I had to find another way to pursue that education. I was determined to fulfill my dreams and I refused to take no as an answer. So I appealed. But once again, faced rejection. Not in my wildest dreams did I think I'd be speaking before you here today, let alone graduating from the same institution that denied me entrance, not once, but twice. I let the decision of institutions define and limit my definition of success. I knew I had no choice but to pursue a higher education, but it was hard to do so when I felt like a failure. I picked myself back up. I moved across the country to attend George Mason University. I, it was tough to swallow the fact that it, I wasn't at UW at first, but the second I changed my perspective, the second I changed my perspective of what getting an education actually meant, my experience changed for the better. I quickly realized that it was the place I needed to be at that point of time in my life. But I eventually realized that I had outgrown my environment. I longed for a different pace and set of experiences to continue growing, while also saving on tuition. <laughs> During my junior year, I decided to leave and decided it was no longer worth it. I moved back to Seattle at the end of 2016 with nothing lined up, but with the anticipation of finishing my bachelor's degree at an in-state school. You see, it wasn't, at U it wasn't about UW. I attended Seattle Central as I figured out my next step. I put in my 100% and was extremely patient with myself and the decision I made to deviate from the traditional path. I wasn't always sure I was making the right decision, but I kept reminding myself of who I was, why I left, and where I was going. From the second I moved back to Seattle, I have been welcomed with open arms by some of our amazing advisors who have been there as support and guidance out of my academic journey. A year later, and despite the constant doubt, difficulties, and patience, my dream became my reality. I was accepted into the University of Washington and directly into the Foster School of Business. But it was different this time. This moment didn't fulfill my dream. My dreams lied elsewhere, and this opportunity, this institution would help me get there. Once here, I hit the ground running knowing I only had five quarters until graduation. But since being here, I felt challenged, made some great memories, have traveled the world, de-stressed at Wells Wednesday, and most importantly, <laughs> most importantly, I was able to reconnect with the community I had left just a few years earlier. A part of me doesn't want to leave yet, but then the student loan emails have started to come in and somebody has to pay those off. <laughs> Through all the adversity I've faced, I knew I could depend on my family, my community, my people. I'm a strong believer in that it takes a village to raise a child. And lucky for us, many of us have our village right here with us in this room. I want to take a moment to recognize our biggest supporters. Through our degrees come with our names, it's also important to recognize it's been impacted and manifested through our experiences and the people we've encountered throughout our lives. Today, our families and communities are also gaining a degree, so congratulations to you all as well. <laughs> I 
my experiences have taught me my biggest lesson, my self-worth. And I hope your life experiences have taught you the same. That no school or company can or will define you. Only you have the power to define yourself. <laughs> Many of you are off to start your jobs, grad school or even taking some time off. I leave you with this message. Fear is something to overcome. For my parents, Fear drove them from their homes. It was what they had to overcome when they moved to a completely foreign place. For me, I faced it when I thought my failures equated my self-worth. I thought my rejections defined me as a failure. Whether you know what comes next or not, knowing your self-worth will make you unstoppable. It lets you advocate for yourself because you know you deserve the best. Don't let anything or anyone hold you back. Don't let any institution define or limit your definition of success. And most importantly, Stay, to, stay true to yourselves. As long as you know who you are, you will never be lost. Graduation is an opportunity to reflect back at our many years of stress, adversity, and achievements. Graduation is also a step closer to accomplishing our dreams. For me, this is one step closer to fighting the same barriers I and many others face from within, but also a step closer to empowering and giving back to the same communities that gave me so much. May you embark on your lives with dignity, intention, and humility. Remember your roots and never forget where you came from. Remember to be critical, stay true to your values, and, and be an advocate for those who may not have the same privileges as you do. Remember that there are some serious barriers still in place that are preventing so many people from being successful. Ya'akil, enough to the injustices that my people face in Eritrea, and enough to the systematic racism and oppression that my fellow minorities face in this country. We all have a choice to stand up for the injustices we see in the world and in our daily lives. We especially have the power as future business leaders to change the heart of capitalism from exploitation to empowerment. <laughs> to empower disadvantaged communities, to empower immigrants, to empower women and especially women of color. We need to learn from the mistakes that many have made before us. Our country is facing some of the worst income disparities the world has ever seen. It is obvious that American individualism is doing us more harm than good. If we can help change, if we can help change the fabric of that reality from me to we, I promise you that all 700 of us graduating here today have the power to leave this world a better place. And we can do that together. As I'm leaving, I want to say thank you to the amazing peers, mentors, teacher, friends, and family who have left a mark on me throughout my life. I want you all to stand and applaud, not for me, but for the people who have impacted you, your families, your village, your tribe, Together we stand for our communities, and together we stand for changing the heart of capitalism. I wish you all the best of luck as you charge onward. Thank you and congratulations, class of 2019. It's going to be a hard act to follow. <laughs> but I now have the honor of introducing our keynote speaker, Dan Beatty. I'm proud to say that Dan is an accounting grad from the Foster School and also has a law degree from Harvard. Dan has had a remarkable career and has achieved great success across such diverse fields 
as healthcare, wealth management, and in the wine industry. At 26 years old, he took on the job of running a small chain of nursing homes called Hillhaven. When the company was sold, it was the nation's second largest nursing home company. Dan later founded Emeritus Senior Living, and following its merger with Brookdale Senior Living, it became the, the nation's largest network of senior care providers with 1,000 facilities and 80,000 employees. In 1989, Dan founded Columbia Pacific Management, and this company has developed a network of modern hospitals throughout Asia. Dan was also an early investor in the Washington wine industry. The Beatty family presently owns 4,500 acres of vineyards in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, as well as Precept Brands, which is one of the largest privately owned wine companies in the Northwest, and I believe it's the 12th largest nationally. Dan has started numerous companies over his outstanding business career, but I'll mention just one more, Columbia Pacific Wealth Management. This company provides comprehensive wealth management strategies for high net worth individuals and foundations, and has approximately 3.5 billion under management. Finally, Dan is well known for his philanthropy and support of many charitable organizations with his time and resources. This includes the University of Washington Medical Center, the Foster School of Business, the Seattle Symphony, the Pacific Northwest Ballet, Child Haven, and the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. Please join me in a warm wel welcome for a uniquely talented business leader, Dan Beatty. My inclination is just to say ditto. <laughs> Congratulations to all of you, and I, uh, this is a huge honor for me to be here, and I thank you. It's a day to celebrate what you've accomplished and also to kick off what you're going to do. A couple weeks ago, my wife Pam and I were getting our vegetable garden ready to plant, and I really hadn't started thinking about what I was going to say. And two words just popped into my head. I mean, I wasn't thinking about it. And those are experiences and risk. So that's what I'm going to talk about a little bit here. All of our experiences contribute to building a base of knowledge and approach to managing events. Think of where you are today compared to where you were as freshmen. Apart from what you've learned, think of the education process and how much you've, you have managed, what major, what courses, how do you interact with the professors, how are you going to pay for it? How different professors have managed their approach to teaching. Consider your interaction with a diverse group of students coming from all kinds of backgrounds. Sports, music, hobbies, work, family, all provide experiences that expand our capacities. Looking at my own business career from a personal standpoint got me to think about some of the experiences that were the most important to me, providing a basis and ongoing groundwork for decisions I have made and risks I have taken. My education was targeted at a business career, majored in accounting at the U, took all the philosophy classes I could. The goal was to be able to think and add at the same time. At the university, I lived with 100 guys for four years with diverse backgrounds, providing a very different kind of positive experience. Twice during the summers of my undergraduate time, I hitchhiked across the United States. That's probably a word that most of you have not heard before. It would be impossible to have that experience today. Freeways and safety would prohibit it. Imagine getting dropped off at midnight at a small town in northern Montana. I didn't see any cars for hours. Then this guy stops, and we drove together all the way to Minneapolis. It was a fabulous experience. While at Harvard, I worked 25 hours a week at, in the Pricewaterhouse Tax Department in Boston. 
what an education doing high net worth tax returns for individuals. My major learning experience there, lesson, the people that made the most money invested in good companies with good management rather than trying to outthink the market. The summer between graduating from the U and starting law school in Boston, I flew to Lisbon, bought a motor scooter, and spent two months traveling throughout Europe and England by myself. Being by myself for the first time gave me a greater appreciation of friends and family. One of my more important business experiences occurred while at Harvard. During the football season, in order to see a football game and make some money, I signed on to sell food and beverage in the stadium. I picked Coca-Cola to sell and um, did pretty well the first week. After the first game, I learned that the top seller got a $100 bonus. So I changed my tactics. I observed during the first week that the people didn't want the cola, they wanted the ice. So I poured half the cups of liquid out and just sold ice, and I won the $100 every game after that. <laughs> I mean, these kind of small experiences really teach you a lot. On the business side, as the dean said, when I was 26, I became the CEO of a small healthcare company in Tacoma. Significant risk, because at the time I was the, uh, the, the head tax attorney for the largest firm in southwest Washington, and uh, I was also on the faculty of PLU in Tacoma. So I gave that up to the security, you might say, to take a risk. When I left, 12 years later, the revenues had gone from 900 million to 2.7 billion, and that's in today's dollars. Everything was new to me. Operations, accounting, finance, HR, but most importantly, in the first few years, culture. How do you develop a culture that works? Using this experience and always adding to it as I went along, I replicated the same process in five other times, five other companies. Businesses were all a little different, but the basic approach was the same. Along the way, we uh, did healthcare business in France and the UK, and uh, these expanded our ability to provide healthcare in other parts of the world. A couple uh, particular experiences. I was on the board, I guess, when I was about 30, of a company in Tacoma that um, made um, stain for outdoors, and um, we had about 70% of the market, and we, the management said, well, stain is like um, paint, so why don't we get in the paint business? It all looks the same. You sell it the same place. Well, we learned after a couple of years that there was a huge difference between paint and stain. So I always ask, what business am I in? And over time, that shifts, so I keep asking, because it's easy to think you're in this business and all of a sudden you're doing something else. So it's an experience I had that uh, I used the rest of my business career. All these experiences will contribute to our ability to be successful and have an interesting life. Take advantage of your opportunities. Moving to risk, um, when I was 42, I quit the company in Tacoma without having a particular idea what I was going to do next. I had been investing in a small company uh, out of Oregon that developed and operated independent living facilities for elderly. My partner had his own construction company, and along the way, it got into financial difficulty. I signed a guarantee for many millions of dollars for a business that I had no particular involvement. Obviously, this was a huge risk for us. Fortunately, he worked things out, and we sold the operating company eight years later for a very large amount of money. In building several companies, 
There are always the financial risk, and that is what we generally focus on. But equally important are other kinds of risks. A conceptual risk. Did we get it right? We built hospitals in Asia, and we didn't know anything about hospitals or Asia. But we understood what the, mark, what the change in the market would, is, was going to be, and that's emerging middle class. Operating risk. Do we have the right people? Um, initially, when we went to Asia, we br brought people from America to run the hospitals. After a couple of years, it became obvious this wasn't the right thing to do, and we hired local people thereafter. What is the legal system risk? In India, it takes five to 10 years to solve a legal problem. What is the political environment risk? This, this happens no matter where you are, and um, in the US or in foreign countries, but you have to understand it. Currency risk. When we initially uh, went to Asia, one of the countries we were in was Vietnam, and we put the exchange rate was uh, very, very low, and uh, we put bills in a bag, and they waited at the bank, and that's how they counted. Early on, we, made, we, we had started a major healthcare company, both in the UK and France. Again, this experience provided the basis which allowed us to go forward in the rest other areas in the, in the world. In the last 15 years, we've built 30 hospitals in India, Indonesia, Malaysia, and currently have uh, healthcare operations in China. And we have a clinic in Africa and about ready to build our first hospital there. But again, this ability to do this is based on experiences we've had in operating here and in Europe. The main things we, we try to understand and think about are the risks and how to mitigate that. We have leveraged these experiences to where we are a significant health player for half the world's population. And that's, it's interesting and, and uh, how we go about it and understanding it, it's just an uh, outstanding experience. Going back to the beginning, value your experiences in all aspects of life. Couple this with a keen understanding of managing risk. Maximize your experiences and develop an approach to risk. So I've, I've talked about risk and experiences having a major impact on where I am today. But I would like to take this opportunity to say to you, apart from that, the most important thing is appreciate your family and your friends. Thank you. Thank you, Dan, for being a part of today's celebration, and thanks for your inspiring and motivational words. Now it's time for the formal recognition part of our program. <laughs> Faculty, please take your positions. <laughs> Students. Okay, here we go. I would, uh, I would like to invite each of the graduates to take to the stage so that we may recognize all of you individually. Students, our ushers will welcome you, one row at a time, to come to the left and the right-hand sides of the stage. When your name is called, please join me or Dean Giambalvo by crossing to the center of the stage. At this time, I'd like to welcome Assistant Dean of Undergraduate Programs, Vicki Haig-Day, 
and the chair of the accounting department and incoming dean of the Foster School of Business, Frank Hodge, who will read each of the names of today's graduates. Colby Kraus. Alexander Liskin. Michael Sibbett. Aliyah Ali. Jennifer Lowe. Carla Nahera Hasso. Kira Ewai. Halina Bantilalu. Rose Zhao. Brianna Huang Huynh. Joanne Kim. Yared Haptamarian. Momomi Lam. Cassetti Reddy. Michael Kwan. Cecinos Zerbabio. Derek Hu. Truman Huno. Win Fung Cao. Austin Sharma. Jale Baker. Mike Julian Zabara Gavara. Sunshine Arcilia. Sheldon Spring. Paolo Election. Fatib Muse. Nada Al Musade. Idoi Jeremiah. Jacob Lawson. Stephanos Avarkiel. Michael Jitta. Jinjeta Milan. Scott Thomas Jr. Brian Chu. Michael DiGiovanni. Kyle Euland. Joshua Holler. Connor York. Trevor Thompson. John Bravo. Stuart Sanderson. Nicholas Hudson. Nicholas Cooper. Brian Berglund. Star Meili Vilai. Samantha Christie. Megan Paraiso. Kimberly Clayton. Andrew Mahone Fernandez. Gregory Arietta. Isaiah Barhum. Lincoln Bridges. Julian Farlan. Madison Beyer. Luke Vavrick. Nina Scott Pace. Brenda Bowie. Cannon Rowe. Johnny Nguyen. Zach Ehrlich. 
Jeffrey Zhao. Aaron Hartman. Harry Cho. Tommy Nguyen. Kevin Gladwell. Colton Sturba. Michelle Ogle. Alex Vaca. Monica Riley. Sydney Husseini. Nathaniel Post. Jonathan Kim. Anastasia Boronina. Nicholas Chu. Michael Lewis. Alvin Luke. Elise Diskin. Edwin Manjaras. Abby Strong. Bantam Lu. Brooke Londa. Samuel Erickson. Tristan Smith. Clayton. Sabrina Overson. Clayton Hunter. Theo Natsis. Mike Callen. Caleb Olson. Benjamin Honig. Daniel Zellinger. Hunter Hurley. Yoon Fang. Lucas Semkew. Danielle Wall. Chase Graham. Nicholas Schmidgall. Sarah Hanley. David Golovatsky. McKenna Wall. Mark Procor. Rebecca Schock. Ryan McLean. Camille Ewers. Lily Wen. Leave Gruber. Tyler Johnson. Ellen Quinlan. Tyler Wigan. Caroline Taylor. Alina Zercher. Damon Rudisil. Kiera Watson. Kimberly Purdue. Jessica Huffman. Carolyn Chi. Nina Vong Chai Chen Si. Ran Ran Wong. Ellie Salvisberg. Jonathan Sai. Robin Powers. Ross Koken. Mackenzie Miguel. Vivian Chin. Jamie Kaufman. <laughs> Emma Graysmark. Maxina Butler. Patrick Kroll. Maxwell Thomas. <laughs> Elliot McGill. Mark Antonio Martinez. Kelly McGee. Daniel Settles. Michelle Sims. Logan Olson. 
Simon Tewalde. Marianne Joy Bartolomon. Benjamin Tran. Benjamin Allen. Nathan Toe. Glenn Kabachuski. Jake Ben Susan. Kevin Nathanael Harmanagan. Luca Fryer. Melvin Afundi. Jed Quek. Darren Lucky. Yes, like the princess. Ariel Stevens. Christy Megan Kanadi. Jamie Manning. Ines Gunawan. Maximilian Powers. Nathan Yap. Vlad Rudenko. Warren Chu. Danica Stuken. William Hoffman. Emily Quo. Yeah, Emily. Alex Cody. Nicholas Ajamian. Riley Flynn. Yeah. Eric Wong. Yeah. Cole Brandt. Jennifer Lee. Michael Seeley. Brandon Naluai. Ryan Mills. Thomas Ayton. Benjamin Waymiller. Michael Long. Michael King. Jerry Du. Alan Zeng. Jonas Chen. Cody Martinson. Kelsey Evenson. Sachi Insekitan. Halsey Stoltz. Felicia Ng. Madeline Weir. Isabella Johnson. Navkiran Gill. Skylar Tatro. Angelica Anderson. Ashley Seaton. Yuan Lee. Robin Duquette. Yuju Lim. Dominic Mendoza. Alize Carmali. Katsini Samani. Julia Jones. Yurinda Hill. Joshua Kim. Cheryl Harmon. Doug Dengis. Ixan Madura. Carson Champagne. Michael Idiali. Nicholas Nagel. Amy Lamb. Colin Larson. Rebecca Warbaski. Elena Holloway. Taylor Kuahara. Callie Craig. 
Grant Pashinsky. Megan Moran. Lucia Ardino. Keshav Umat. Davin Yum. Rohith Kumar. Ramsey Beatty. Si Young Kwan. Drew Glass. Cheyenne Fields. Sydney Counts. Moham Shawab. Jason Callison. Jennifer Wang. Mallory. Lauren Mallory. <laughs> Melanie Marshall. Heather Dixon. <laughs> Kyle Loofborough. <laughs> Milis Jordan. Ryan Haig. Rachel Skank. Savannah Snyder. Elena Lewis. Danielle Seaman. Adelaide Knox. Jack Richmond Dole. Rianne Wong. Dimitri Ilias. Vine Bun. Mackenzie Warfield. Christine Lee. Isabel Block. Samantha Valdez. Megan Larkin. Julia Hernandez. Ken Vays Sidhu. Sangho Bach. Kyle Scattergood. Jessica Lee. <laughs> Oliver Perry. Hannah Wynn. Zachary Cohen. Lindsay Higgins. Nicholas Bonofsky. Myra Luna. Dylan Daka. Simran Gill. Christopher Sorda. Michelania Javaria. Jorge Rodriguez. Devin Lackage. Will Schober. Nice picture. Natalie Roger. Riley Hummel. <laughs> Kayla Holland. Bradley Estes. <laughs> Madeline Nemi. Connor Marmion. Brian Van Osdale. Rami Musi. Robert Ellis. Azan Sarosh. Spencer Newmiller. Sital Sandu. Donald Collins. Haley Chamberlain. Zachary Carlisle. Kristen Plank. Timo Luce. Madeline Smolinski. Daniel Conan. Sherston Scanlon. Jasmine Diebler.
Aaron Toy. Frank Mueller. He Jong Angela Hong. Anna Kozuchik. Masahiko Hashigawa. Samuel Dolin. Stefan Salem. Satchel Smith. Harmon Hundall. Peter Ramsey. Desiree Hayes Vitor. Stephen Whitman. Manveen Dillon. James Parks. Emily Hammermeister. Brandon Law. Elise Rosenfeld. Teresa Olivos. Kramer Sims. Maria Alejandres Flores Cardenas. Quentin Lebeau. Mary Lee Jada Mitchell. Anjanette Baldwin. Victoria Cummins. Shannon Milner. Sarah Lee. Isaiah Rendorio. Jinju Sung. Michaela Christensen. Diane Daun Kim. Kalina Shunson. Hannah Choi. Kiara Ondole. Tej Kamaraju. Ryan Mamaseri. David Potowelts. Sky Schofield. Joseph Vu. Keenan Goodman. Kristen Moran. Benjamin Brinkman. Griffin Paulson. Reagan Klein. Sean Cron. Michelle Chen. Alexandra Thatch Webster. Roy Chapman. Spencer Bennett. Matthew Lamb. Aaron McDermott. Ted Chen. Shauna Joe. Ashley Lim. Nikki Amanpour. David Chong. Michaela Oaks. Ruben Smith. Serena Nguyen. Kaylin Daly. Jade Desprez Lynn. Megan Smith. Miranda Lockman. Sarah Westhoff. Evan Sather. Joy Kim. Sarah Elzinga. 
Michelle Yu. Daniel Mers. Katie Tang. Shivani Sharma. Lily Doe. Thomas Kim. Jamie Luz Lorente Villanueva. Hannah Tyndall. <laughs> Melissa Ramos. Erica Shaw. Lucy Zhao. Katie Block. Duncan McKelvey. Samuel O'Brien. Charles Hale. Madison Mulliter. Madison Mulliter. Hayden Coffey. Holly Stiant Brown. Paul Wonje Kim. Astrid Krivonik. Justin Ko. April Kalberg. Jun Ho Um. Kiet Win. Kyle Rhodes. Vianica Mendalica. Young O. Deborah Galliana. Lisi Cabrera. Kavika Lamb. Amna Savder. Austin Lee. Savannah Dang. Baron Baura. Siao Wong. Hannah Yoon. Ryan Muirhead. Sunny Zhu. Sumanpreet Carr. Madison Weinman. Jessica Chen. Julia Wynn. Adma Munkjalal. Felicia Joanna Mardani. Juman Obeyed. Adeline Natawijaya. Sequoia Left Hand. <laughs> Ursula Michelle. Harriet Naylor. Jason Walla. Nisha Aluwalia. Elson Tamara. Kelly McGuire. Davina Carissa Salomon. Davrima Carissa Salomon. Pascal Dominil. Dominil. Kevin Nathaniel. Brooke Mason. Emma Brand. Deidrel Sudangsal. Luke Munger. Ramsey Kutob. Jorge Espinoza. Rupinder Jikar. King Rainwater. Jaden Bugdevine. Chase Riesman. Irma Halilovich. Patrick Fallis. Sharon Burr. Nicholas Wood. R.K. Burr. 
Branson Fewer. Young Wan Cha. Joshua Mush. Arthi. Yes, Arthi. Ganapathi. Okay. Arthi Ganapathi. Amber Lee. Gayatri Jaswal. Hannah McConaughey. Jordan Cook. Nicholas Harmon. William Wilson. Jacob Cassinbordo. Gabriel Olson. Samuel Silver. Blake Guilford. Caitlin Vills. Derek Hong. Catherine Kinney. Tyler Nguyen. Andrew Weinkoff. Joseph Lay. David Cow. Natalie Tussie. Sushao Lu. Alexander Harris. Kaishin Wong. Kaishin Wong. Katie Hallberg. Kyle Philly. Zane Hyatt Khan. Ania Sandvig. Megan Roberts. Madison O'Ravage. Gavin Mahoney. Lily Wilkinson. Olivia Murphy. Kiara Wilson. Callie Malang. Elise Berberolu. Jennifer Scherer. Emily Nickerson. Talia Vestal. Chloe Buckley. Catherine Hansen. Daniela Turner. Emily Lindner. Calvin Lee. Maggie Gardner. Christopher Castle. Mariah Miller. Matthew Moretti. Olivia Bloom. Nail Dean. Chloe Hulesman. Junren Ma. Lindsay Clerf. Ferencia Cristobal. Kelsey Tam. Niusha Arvani. Joanna Tam. Eden Patterson. John Starsevich. Serena Allendorfer. Connor Finley. Pau Jindadanaset. Gabrielle Waterman. Skylar Sidiwata Kanan. Caitlin Valencia. Cindy Chen. Yes. Megan Reedon. How you won. Denali Bullens. Katrina Dai. Andrew Roger. Zoe Tsui. 
Jake Cameron. Yenyu Lee. Trevor Laviel. Trevor Laviel. Yufan Lee. Zach Golob. Nam Fan. Kincaid Kryle. Shaden Freebairn. Roger Scott the Third. Kiana Shui. Aubrey McKenzie. Tilda Fellen. Jordan Barnes. Sarah Wayne. Brendan Rigby. Jonathan Van Paris. Jacob Adler. Jasmine Koss. Joey Payden. Brendan Harris. Alex Larson. Fu Long. Harrison McLean. Alex Lopez. Anthony Tran. Alan Ian Kai. John Ratliff. Jake Isley. William Maloney. Jesse Ryan. Eva Velasco. Tarek McLeod. Joanna Avila. Woo! Hannah Strickland. Alvaro Tlachi. Ashonda Marie Kautz. Dhruv Nethwani. Luke Holsinger. Johnny Oshner. Andrew Veto. Christopher Midzigian. Jordan Rawlings. Patrick O'Brien. Christopher Solomon. Janelle Schilling. James Reed Howland. Justin Tundria. Gabriel Rishwain. Richard Tran. Alexandre Azera. Joe Yu Chan. Brennan Vanderhoeven. Lisa Wen. Ariel Gemza. Junyi Hao. Riley Russell. Lee Swedeen. Katie Spooth. Corey Beck. Parker Weimer. Teddy Grenley. Perna Sari. Perna Sari. Nolan Bernard. Erwina Ritchie. AJ Layton. Maricruz Palma Cortez. Nick Funahashi. Audrey Yurastian. Nuan Crystal Wen. Go. Jackson Thatcher. Amanda Smith. 
Jose Luis Rodriguez, Jr. Robbie Johnson. Amanda Ellinghouse. Rachel Marshall. Ashlyn Reed. Brandon Lee. Anne Marie Azure. Stormy Allen Peterson. Brian Huang. Anissa Gomez. Kelly Wynn. Allison Henry. Cynthia Wynn. Michelle Cow. Elizabeth Manabusen. Zoraida Valdivinos. Daniel Carell. Dana Corpuz. Harman Carsandu. Navjot Kaur. Tony Wynn. Please return to your seats. Nice job. Outstanding, outstanding. Way to go. Way to go. What a group. Way to go. All right. Well, congratulations to all of you, grads. Let's take a moment to thank family, friends, and supporters for making today possible. Okay. Hey, I got an idea. How about a, a little managerial accounting just for fun? <laughs> what? You remember your manufacturing flow of costs? Indulge me. All kidding aside, I have often remarked that each of you being honored here today came to us as a raw material. OK, I'm an accountant. Give me a break here. Raw material in the sense that you are ready to learn new ideas and ready to experience new challenges. And as you were transferred into work in process, our esteemed faculty then added doses of labor and overhead, some of you requiring a bit more labor than others. Now I'm proud to say that I look out at all of you and think of you as finished goods. It's just a metaphor. <laughs> finished goods in the sense that you are individuals poised to become the next generation of business leaders no matter where you choose to journey. You are what we make and you are our product. That's all I mean by that. But as our product, as our product, you now bear a special patina, okay? A patina of purple and gold that comes from immersing yourself in the education and the opportunities that are a part of the Foster School experience. And with that, I ask all graduates to participate in the ceremonial tradition of turning the tassel. Graduating seniors, please rise. Please move your tassel from the right side of your cap to the left side. That's the debit side. Congratulations. Please be seated. Please be seated. 
To say that I am proud of, proud of you today is putting it mildly. My colleagues and I are honored to call you graduates and alumni. Now go out there and continue to do the great things we expect from you. Make us proud. That brings us to the end of the celebration. I ask that all of our guests please remain seated until the recessional concludes. Thank you for coming. Have a wonderful day. Go Huskies. And congrats, class. Thank you.